Hi, um, IGF Technical team. Um, a request here to please make uh, a couple of my colleagues uh, panelists with rights. I can see Benga is logged in and Mike Katakonin. Hello, hello, Ashna. And this is Luis Bobo, United Nations. Uh, I am trying to help here. So, who, who are panelists? Sorry, we have three attendees. Mike Carter? Uh, yes, Mike Carter Conin. Okay. Uh, Sassan. There will be two others that haven't yet joined. Um, my colleague has shared their names and emails uh, okay. in the chat. Great, thank you. Uh, Dear host, I don't know exactly who you are, sorry, can you maybe tell us who you are? If you can maybe make Asna co-host of the meeting so she can directly promote people as well. Thank you. Hi. Okay, I'll, uh, I'll send a follow-up email to Edwin and Siggy to make sure they're still waiting. Um, Ashna, while we're waiting for them to join us, do you want to test the PowerPoint video and audio? Uh, yes, I'll do that. Share screen. Uh, you can see my screen, right? Yes, uh, so go to slideshow at the top. Uh, huh? uh, so home, insert, draw, design, transitions, animations, and then slideshow at the top of your screen. You'll click slideshow. Is that in Zoom or in my PowerPoint? On your PowerPoint. Oh, okay. Now I'm seeing so many things. Yes, uh, it's like the sixth item to the right. There you go. Okay. Right. So we need to test the audio, yeah? Just one second. Yes. More than half a billion Africans access it. Can you hear that? That's more yes, than all the- very good. Awesome. Good job. Um, Siggy is uh, there as an attendee. She's one of our panelists. To our IGF friend, if you could admit her as a panelist, Siggy uh, M. Very good. Thank you so much. Hello, Siggy. Welcome to the other side. <laughs> Hi. I was wondering how to unmute myself. <laughs> how is yes. everyone? Very good. Okay. Hi, Ashna. Hi, Benga. Hi, Siggy. Hi, Siggy. Am I still sharing my screen? Yes, you are. Yes. Okay. My so many options now. I don't know what to. Just one second, as I. Hi, Asna. This is uh, Luis. You are co-host now, so you should be able to uh, promote people to panelists directly. Thank you okay. so much. Louis. If you go to that in this part, you can click on any name more and then it's promote to panelists. Great. Okay. Still watching for Edwin. I haven't seen him yet, Ashna. 
I have to leave you here. I have another meeting. Sorry, but how, thank how you. Thank you for your assistance. No problem. You have here the host as well. And Benga and Ashna, are you familiar with Zoom webinar where you can access the Q and A? So at the bottom of the screen, next to the share screen yeah, option, looks like yes. Benga's, Benga's familiar. So we're in good hands, I think. Yeah, my screen's going funny. Maybe because I'm sharing. Anyway, when I'm done, I think. <laughs> <laughs> if for some reason um, it feels uh, slow to process, you may turn off your Zoom video and just allow your bandwidth of your of your computer to process the PowerPoint with the video. That's what we did uh, with the media webinar the other day. I almost couldn't recognize you, Sigi. What? <laughs> now I can process it. Now I can. <laughs> okay. Was my connection unclear? I'm on my new hairstyle. <laughs> <laughs> Right, it's one minute past the, the scheduled time for this session. Welcome everyone to this session on lessons from the Africa Internet Rights Alliance on protecting uh, digital rights in Africa. My name is Ashna Kalemera. I'm with the Collaboration on International ICT Policy for East and Southern Africa, based in Kampala, Uganda. And I am one of your hosts for this evening or afternoon or morning, wherever you're <laughs> joining us from. Thank you, Ashna. My name is Benga Sheson. I'm your co-host uh, this morning, afternoon, or evening, and I'm the executive director of Paradigm Initiative. Thank you, Benga. Uh, once again, thank you for joining us, participants. Uh, as a way of introductions beyond myself and Benga, we will have other members of the Africa Internet Rights Alliance uh, from across the continent introduce the Alliance and its work. Oh, now my screen share has disappeared. So once again, welcome to the virtual IGF. Uh, we're still in 2020, obviously. You know, we're in 2020 when everything happens online. And just as we wait for the video to start, um, I trust that people will be able to ask questions. So please, if you have a question, please don't wait. Uh, just go ahead and use the question and answer 
uh, function to post a question. It may be answered right there, or we may be able to attend uh, to it. Thank you, Benga. So introducing- Each I month, more than half a billion Africans access the internet. That's more than all the internet users in North America and Middle East combined. And the number continues to grow. As the internet and digital technology become more and more integrated into all aspects of life, the inequalities and challenges we face online are reflected offline. We face new challenges to our human rights in the digital context, including unequal access, censorship, and violence online. We, we must, must work, work together, together to ensure that everyone's rights are protected and respected. The African Internet Rights Alliance, AIRA, envisions an Africa where digital rights are upheld in all aspects of life, governance, and the economy, ensuring equity and prosperity across the continent. Our work is rooted in four values, accountability, transparency, integrity, and good governance. Using these values as a guide, AIRA undertakes collective interventions and executes strategic campaigns that engage the government, private sector, media, and the civil society. Our goal is to institute and safeguard privacy and data protection, affordability, and access to the internet. Access to information and freedoms of assembly, expression, and the press. AIRA is comprised of nine civil society organizations based in countries across the continent, West, East, and Southern Africa. These include Amnesty International, Article 19, Eastern Africa, Bojit, Center for IP and IT Law at Strathmore University, Co-Creation Hub, IPESA, Kicktonet, Legal Resources Center, and Paradigm Initiative. We are building a movement to establish, advance, and protect digital rights for all on the African continent. So join us. Join us. Join us. The wonderful faces you have seen are the membership of the Africa Internet Rights Alliance from Uganda to Nigeria, from Nigeria to South Africa and Kenya and beyond. Nine organizations with unique experience and expertise that have come together to advance digital rights on the continent through documenting developments, engaging stakeholders, including state and non-state actors. And the mission of IRA, uh, as you can see, um, and as I'm sure you can almost tell from what you've listened to, uh, include the following. Apart from, you know, we're collecting interventions and executing strategy initiatives to promote privacy and data protection, affordability and access to the internet. Of course, that's something that we all should be concerned about, uh, especially as we see lockdowns or even you know, post lockdown, but during this pandemic and people need to learn, work and do everything online. Access to information and freedoms of assembly, expression and the press. Some of the work we've done together uh, include writing and distributing uh, a digital rights terminology uh, document for journalists. And of course, in addition to that, we also hosted a webinar on digital rights, COVID-19 and elections across Africa. Uh, and I'm sure that everyone has heard stories from Tanzania, from Cote d'Ivoire, from Guinea over the last few days. Uh, this is the reason we have these conversations. We've also sent joint letters to the United Nations and the African Commission on Human and People's Rights uh, regarding at least two things. One is the Kenya uh, Computer Misuse and Cybercrimes Act, and the second is the Nigerian Cybercrimes Act. Uh, in addition to those, we facilitated you know, a joint social media campaign aimed at governments who have unfairly uh, detained journalists We've supported the creation of the draft declaration of freedom of expression and access to information. And of course, we continue to engage with the media on digital rights challenges and opportunities from 
explaining what digital rights is, thinking about some of the experiences in various countries who work in, to also asking that everyone should definitely be a digital rights advocate. For more so, on our Sorry, Benga, go ahead. No, I was just going to say, so uh, Ashna will take it home and tell you how you can contact us before we talk to another member of ours who is on this uh, chat with us. Over to you, Ashna. Thank you, Benga. So as he has indicated, you can read more about our work and our membership and hopefully join our movement uh, to establish, advance and protect digital rights across the continent. Uh, on the web, we are www.ira.africa. On Twitter, we are at Ira underscore Africa. Facebook, Africa Internet Rights Alliance. And we are also on LinkedIn. Thank you. I will stop sharing my screen now. And move into the second half of this session where we will introduce our panelists and ask them to turn their videos on if they already are not on. Siggy and Edwin, there you are. So we have Siggy with us today and Siggy is going to answer all questions, tough, not tough and everything else. <laughs> you, Siggy. Thank you, Ashley. Maybe, maybe I can say a bit about Sigi before we continue. Uh, she's a digital policy consultant at Article 19 East Africa. She was a fellow of Google Policy Program and the African School on Internet Governance. And in 2019, she provided direct support, vice chairperson of the African Commission on Human and People's Rights and directly contributed to the revised Declaration of Principles of Freedom of Expression and Access to Information in Africa. She is passionate about everything expression rights and their inter interdependence with other human rights and their lived implications. You can tell Sigi is excited. Yes, she is. And thank you so much for joining us, Sigi. Uh, our second panelist is having difficulty joining, but in the meantime, I think we will proceed uh, as we also welcome questions via the chat function. So, Siggy, why digital rights? Why everything expression like Benga has indicated? What attracts you to this? Why not other human rights or other causes? There's very many of them. Thank you, Ashna, and uh, thank you, Benga, for that, uh, for that fantastic introduction. Uh, hello to everyone. Um, uh, I think one of, the, one of the core mantras that um, the IRA coalition has been um, pushing um, as early as um, you know the, the, the early and mid 2000s is is um, is breaking down this perception that um, digital rights are separate and distinct from you know from this wide spectrum of, of, of human rights um, and I think the core mantra that we have been pushing for is is you know just magnifying that digital rights are human rights. Um, and IRA members have been advocating quite fiercely um, on this particular front across the, the African continent. Um, for the IRA members, digital rights are the unseen, the nuanced thread that essentially ties um, um, all of these crucial rights together. And it, as you mentioned earlier, it forms part of our part of the IRA's um, our vision, um, where digital rights are upheld in all aspects of life, of, of governance, of the economy, uh, ensuring equity and prosperity across the continent. Um, I think one of the the one of my personal um, messages, like, I, like that, I like hammering not just to myself but also to the stakeholders that we engage, is that digital rights have become a, a permanent feature of of everyday events, of of everyday life, um, and you know we've seen this quite recently in countries um, including Nigeria, and um, where uh, uh, many of our of, of the IRA members are are based. Um, and we continue to see individuals and communities um, harnessing the revolutionary power of the internet, of, of communication platforms, um, not just to express um, anger and frustration and to push back against police brutality in the offline world, but also as a facilitator of their digital rights to expression, um, which Article 19 um, um, advocates quite fervently for, uh, to access information, to freedom of, of assembly and association. Um, and so, you know, to, to IRA um, and to the, to the, to the uh, members who constitute IRA, digital rights are not just 
instrumental because of what they permit, but also because of what they facilitate um, in the in the online and the in the offline world. And I think that this overlap and the enabling force is one of the core strengths of the, of the of, of digital rights. Um, and so, you know, just based on this picture, it becomes easier to understand why guaranteeing, why promoting, why um, um, fulfilling these rights um, is so crucial. Um, yes, I think I'll stop off yeah. my response. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thanks. Thanks a lot, Sigi. So, um, Ashna, I'm going to ask you this question. Um, so, you have the pleasure of being uh, with CEPESA, which is the, you know, the coordinating organization for IRA. And, and the question is, so what, what, what do you think is the benefit of our collaboration? What impact can this, you know, our partnership and other coalitions we work with on digital rights you know, have when, when we face multiple challenges from multiple actors, because it's not just about government. Uh, there's also the fact that at times private sector is also a player in the whole thing economy. So what have you seen as a coordinating organization and also as an expert in this area uh, regarding the benefits of collaborating? Uh, thank you, Benga. Uh, the organization I represent, its first word is collaboration and we live and breathe collaboration at CIPESA. And for reasons that I'm sure everyone's familiar with, uh, collaboration, there are various synergies that partners bring on board uh, various experiences, it avoids duplication of efforts and efficiency in leveraging resources that are very often limited uh, in this space. Uh, there is an African saying, or a saying, I don't know if it's really African, that if you want to go quickly, go alone. If you want to go far, go together. And um, that is as uh, relevant to the digital rights space as it is to any other human rights cause. Since you asked me a question, Benga, I will ask you the next. Um, I've said all the, the, the rosy things about collaboration. Uh, what are the barriers or challenges in partnerships and coalitions uh, in advancing digital rights and uh, opportunities in uh, overcoming those challenges? Yeah. Thanks, Ashna. So, I mean, I think there are three key things. Uh, one is trust, the other is resources, and the third is the people. Uh, in terms of trust, you need trust to be able to work together. Uh, one of the things that, you know, helps us at IRA and any other coalition that Prada Initiative has worked with is that we're not just people who are interested in digital rights, but we've literally become friends. Uh, we trust the intention uh, of one another is to work towards a particular objective. So it becomes very easy for us to trust each other. Trust is the currency of, of, of collaboration. Uh, the other is in terms of resources, which also ties with the point of people, because uh, in a way, people are also resources. I mean, I, I love not to say people are resources because uh, you don't want to spend people or use people. Uh, but in, in reality, uh, the fact that you know, we can marshal our resources, uh, you know, Article 19 with CPESA, with PIN, with budget, with CCOP can say, you know what, guys, we're interested in this one thing. Let's pull our resources together, you know, such that one plus one plus one plus one is not even four anymore, it's now 40. And that I think uh, is how, you know, so these are some of the challenges, you know, that, that we could have. If there's a lack of trust, uh, then there's a, you know, an impossibility around collaboration. And if resources are limited or they don't exist, then there's a major problem. Uh, and in terms of people, if there are no you know, individuals who are willing to champion this cause, because like they say, everybody expects somebody to do it. So nobody gets it done. And then we blame everybody. Thank you, Benka. Sigi, I'll pose the next question to you. Um, when assessing digital rights, what are the current trends in the different regions of the continent? Sorry, I, I seem to have misplaced my, my mute button. Uh, thank you for that fantastic question, Ashna. Um, I think one of the core points that IRA magnifies, um, and this is this is replicated in our um, expansive membership across the, the continent, is that contextualization is key, um, and this contextualization is important not just across the regions, but also at the sub-regional level, um, as well as the the individual um, the individual state level, because each country has its strengths and each country has its weaknesses, um, and uh, one of the common trends that has continued to impact um, all of the, the, the you know a majority of countries on the continent is is the COVID nineteen pandemic. 
um, and that has consequently affected how countries um, react to uh, promote and, and, and fulfill digital rights. Um, so I, I think just generally speaking, um, all nine um, IRA members um, continue to push for more rights, for, for more spaces, for more platforms to enable digital rights on the continent. Um, we have seen that um, a majority of countries on the continent, um, including Ethiopia, uh, Tanzania most recently, um, are set to either host elections during this year um, up until 2024 and, and, and moving forward. Um, one of the core issues that we have noted here um, that um, continues to be replicated across um, all of the regions of the continent is the issue of, um, of, of internet shutdowns. Um, and, and um, you know, in this particular context, we, we see the challenge of, um, you know, uh, you know different countries, as I mentioned before, have different um, nuances and different approaches to dealing um, and, 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 and promoting um, digital rights. Um, and so um, the, the, our membership permits us to, to address um, issues such as internet shutdowns um, um, using um, contextualized approaches. Um, some of the other trends that we have noted across the region includes the adoption of, uh, of licensing requirements in countries like Kenya, in Uganda, in Tanzania. Uh, in South Africa, as well as digital taxation regimes, which continue to have an impact on um, nascent uh, digital economies across, across the continent. Um, one of the other issues that we have noted is um, uh, the use of, uh, of contact tracing technologies um, as a means of addressing or, or tackling the COVID-19 pandemic. Um, and naturally, we are aware of the uh, surveillance um, um, uh, uh, challenges, privacy and data protection challenges within this particular context. Um, and so these are some of the issues that, that the IRA members continue um, um, to observe across all of the regions of the continent. Um, they, this list obviously is not exhaustive. Um, okay. um, there are other issues that, that IRA members continue to tackle with. Um, okay. Yes, thank you, Ashna. Okay. Thank you so much, Sigi. Uh, and, and I'll come back to you again. Uh, that we, you know, so we have only 10, well, 10.5, uh, almost 11 minutes left uh, on this very short but productive call. And we have uh, two in one questions uh, from Oluato Dimu and Kole. Uh, you know, so he says, how recognized, he or she says, how recognized or influential would you say IRA is? in the advocacy of free speech on the internet in Africa. Uh, also, is IRA involved in the current issues in Africa? For example, uh, the protest against the regulation of social media uh, in Nigeria. Uh, and if I could just add the part B to it. Uh, also, what are the major tools or strategies that IRA uses to achieve objectives? Uh, you know, so it says here, I think I picked up collaboration. I'm not sure if there are other strategies. So are we involved with things uh, on the including my own country, Nigeria, uh, and what tools and strategies are we using? Benga, is that question for me? Yes, Sigi. Okay, perfect. Uh, I'm, I'll, I'll provide the preliminary responses and I'm sure yourself and, and Ashna will be able to jump in. I think on the issue of our recognition and our, um, our influence, um, even before the alliance became formalized, um, uh, various members of the network had already um, commenced working on, on various projects, um, as I mentioned, going as far back as the mid, as the early and the mid 2000s. Um, and one of the focus areas that um, I remember um, focused on back then and continue to focus on today is the issue of freedom of expression, um, not just on online platforms, but also um, in the offline world. And so, you know, going to answer the, the question of are we involved in, in current issues in Africa, we are absolutely involved um, in issues, uh, current issues in Africa, we are, the coalition consists of um, organizations and individuals who are at the forefront um, um, of not just of digital rights issues, but also of issues affecting corruption, of issues affecting um, protests. Um, Benga, um, I'm, as I'm sure you, you'll point out, uh, Paradigm Initiative, um, amongst the other uh, uh, IRA members who are based in Nigeria, um, as well as um, members, our IRA members who are based outside of Nigeria, continue to push back, um, um, continue to, to, to um, promote a dual usage, not just of, of, of uh, as I mentioned earlier, of communications platforms and the internet, um, but also of um, you know merging these two, um, these online and offline tools um, as an effective means of pushing back against. Um, um, 
uh, and contributing to, to current um, uh, social, political, and economic issues across the continent. Um, going to the issue of tools and strategies, um, collaboration, yes, is one of our core um, core uh, uh, tools and strategies, um, Benga and, and Ashna, as you mentioned earlier, but I think I also want to magnify that um, the coalition is also um, at the forefront of um, producing um, research, um, as I'm sure um, uh, our, our extensive websites and extensive publications will, will allude to. Uh, we are also at the forefront of, of advocacy efforts. Um, so this includes um, engagements with governments, engagement with engagements with, uh, with regulators, um, engagements also with other um, organizations and coalitions across the continent. And so, as you mentioned, um, Ashna, we don't operate as, as you know, using very siloed um, responses. We use multifaceted uh, uh, tools and strategies that um, enable us to effectively um, and appropriately and contextually uh, promote uh, digital rights um, on, on, on the African continent. Thank you, Sigi. Um, Ashna, uh, so I, I don't see any other question from uh, our participants. Oh, one just came in. Okay. <laughs> well, Ashna escapes. I was going to ask Ashna the toughest questions since the COVID lockdown started. Uh, so Mukaberi uh, Amir Hussein says, hello everyone, how do you want to ensure Africa's digital rights in international, at the international level when digital platforms are not responsible under international law regarding their behaviors in global arena? Uh, Sigi and Ashna. Uh, thank you, Benga. Uh, please don't forget to uh, speak about the, the social media in Nigeria quest, part of the question that Sigi answered before. Uh, in response to uh, that question, um, part of IRA's engagements uh, leverage human rights mechanism under state obligations at the continent level through the Africa Commission of Human and People's Rights, but also at the United Nations level. As was mentioned previously in the presentation, our work has involved engaging special rapporteurs uh, under those two mechanisms I just mentioned, as well as providing input to uh, a draft declaration at continent level. So um, our engagements are both uh, at national level and at regional level from the state uh, perspective, but also at uh, continent level and international level under the human rights review mechanisms uh, of the Africa Commission on Human and People's Rights, and also the United Nations. Thanks, Ashna. So now that you've, uh... okay, Sigi, please go ahead and I'll come back to talk a bit about social media in Nigeria. Thank you, Benga. Um, I think the, the question about um, holding digital platforms responsible under, under international law um, is, is a very pertinent one. Um, it is a question that continues to perplex um, countries um, um, and governments across across the world. Um, I think one of the core points that I want to magnify here is, um, and, and you know, just building on to what Benga, uh, sorry, Ashna had stated is, um, you know, irrespective of the. the I think the core point that I want to magnify is that um, private entities and, and private actors and platforms um, have responsibilities um, under, under international law uh, mechanisms. Um, and this has been promoted quite fervently by the, by the United Nations um, in their business and, and, and human rights um, guiding principles. Um, how effective these um, mechanisms are in terms of holding these platforms and these private sector, uh, private um, actors and entities um, are, is, is, is a completely different question. And I think that this is, a, this is one of the areas, um, and I'm sure Benga and Ashna will, will, will um, support me in this, is one of the areas where we would appreciate, um, um, uh, where we would um, um, want to collaborate with, with, with other um, um, actors and, and other entities um, to, to, to effectively um, address these, these problems. Uh, thanks, uh, Ashna and Sigi. So what I will do is I'll take one of those questions and then I'll combine that to, I'll use an example from the media regulation process in Nigeria. Someone has asked here, uh, Jadia says, how was the youth, how can the youth be more involved? Uh, because you, something I've noticed with civil society in Africa is that youth are not involved uh, if they're not specialized in that field. Let me use the social media regulation process uh, and the campaign against that in Nigeria as, you know, as an example here. Paradigm Initiative and other partners are providing information about the process, the issues, 
and the likely uh, solutions. And now, because young people are the ones that have the lived experience, what then what that then does is that they can take the information from organizations like Paradigm Initiative that are working on this and use that in their own way of voicing up and speaking up and saying, uh, we don't want social media controlled because we use it to learn, we use it to connect, uh, you know, and things like that. I'll say two things. One is that young people must not wait to be invited by civil society to get involved. It is your lived experience. So use the tools and resources available through civil society organizations to advance your course. And the second is to say that uh, if you if you check out the average age uh, of IRA members, uh, it will be quite interesting. I mean, you know, just look at Sigi. <laughs> You know, so uh, I, I may look on the 40 plus side, but you can tell from Sigi involved. Uh, and uh, Ashna, do you want to take the question by our friend, Consulate? Uh, was the question shared in the chat? Yes, it says, how do you plan to work with the African Commission on Human and People's Rights? Uh, do we plan to host sessions during the uh, virtually or face-to-face? -face. Um, as previously mentioned, we are already engaging with the Africa Commission on Human and People's Rights, where we provided uh, uh, statements or joint letters with regards to uh, problematic legislation in Kenya and in Nigeria. Uh, such engagement will continue as will uh, our work um, in uh, making stakeholder submissions as part of the periodic uh, review mechanisms uh, that the Human Rights Commission undertakes uh, for every member state. Maybe I can just chime in uh, just to add on to what Ashna has stated. I think one of the other components that I really want to magnify is, uh, as you know, just going back to the issue of the joint letters, that we're already engaging um, regional mechanisms. We're already, we're already engaging the African Commission's um, special mechanisms, especially the, the mechanism on uh, freedom of expression, access to information, um, and just building on the work that has already, um, that was done during previous periods in terms of contributing to the declaration, uh, but also in terms of um, um, promoting the implementation of this particular declaration, um, either as a coalition or as individual uh, uh, members across, across the continent. Thank you so much, Sigi. We are out of time. Very uh, fruitful conversations. Obviously, we could go on and on. Uh, but I'd like to thank you, Sigi, particularly for uh, being a panelist on the spot. Uh, thank you to my co-moderator, Benga, for becoming a panelist along the way. Uh, thank you to the audience. Uh, for participating and uh, attending this session. Please follow Ira on Twitter, Facebook, and LinkedIn, where we can share more on our engagements and efforts and opportunities for collaboration. We are open to uh, engage with many more organizations and share news about the various developments on internet rights uh, across the continent. Thank you all so much. Uh, enjoy the rest of your days, mornings, evenings, and nights in some cases, and all the best to the rest of the IGF. Thank you. Thank you so much, Santisana. Thank you.